fatherless and raised by the internet. We've been suffering from a pandemic of fatherlessness. You know, it's kind of sad that people who have strong fathers, be it a man or a woman who had a strong, good father figure over them, is a minority in our world. It's, it's kind of crazy, you know? And so here we are, you know, you might be 16 watching this, you might be my age, turning 24, could be in your 30s, and you didn't have a strong father over you, you were kind of left <laughs> to pick up the pieces, and it's just you, your TV, or your laptop. You know, that's kind of how I was raised, and God bless, like my mother, she's a warrior, I love her to death, and she did everything in her power, but growing up, I was raised pretty feminine, you know, that's just what happens when there isn't a dad around to kind of help the son turn into a man. So most of my life, man, it was just a drift. I was just like, it's a complete blur, you know? So growing up for me, uh, I got addicted to video games just like that. You know, the, the problem with video games and especially now, video games that run on the internet, multiplayer games, all that stuff. It was one thing in the past, you know, you're playing Paper Mario, you're playing these platformers, you know, it's super chill, it's a vibe, you're playing with your buddies, you're playing with your family, Super Smash Bros, yada, yada, yada. You can already get addicted to that as it is, but now with the multiplayer stuff taking over, and it's already taken over, it's hijacking a very primitive and important part of men, and it's, it's our competitive, our our nature to pursue excellence, to become competent, our nature to crave competition, our nature to become very skilled and adept at something. Online video games hijack, hijack that butterly, like perfectly. They're so good at taking over that drive and hijacking it, you know? And, and for a while, once I started getting into multiplayer games in high school, I was gone, you know? Didn't care about school anymore, really. And that coincided with other things I'll get into, but that was like the big thing, you know, that was me really getting played by the internet, uh, you know, just hooked, hooked, man. I've put in thousands and thousands of hours into these online games that in the end just left me with nothing, really nothing, nothing, man. So that was a problem, you know, I didn't realize that growing up, it, it, I thought it was serving me. I thought I was having a blast, but in retrospect, I could have been doing a, a lot of different things. But anyways, time goes on, and then I found adult content. Adult content, Cornhub. Oh, and man, that, if you've been a long time viewer of the channel, you know my story with that stuff. That, that's like my Achilles heel, man. I, uh, I got so hooked on that stuff that I started um, not going to work, skipping school, lying to my friends, lying to my family, skipping out on social gatherings, sk skipping out on family gatherings, anything, anything to get my fix and get my high. And that really started coinciding perfectly with the video games. You know, the video games became, okay, I have a purpose. I have something fun to do and something to like keep me motivated in life. And then at the same time, I had my virtual girlfriend. It like hijacked both of the very like good, healthy, primitive drives of a man to go get food, go become strong, go get the woman, get the woman. You know, it hijacked both of those. And then I started turning into a couch potato, man. I just started turning into a blob. That was really the, the problem of like, I was being raised by the internet, but in the opposite way, I was being like, wow, but a way, I'm trying to think of a word for it, brazed or something. I was just getting, I was getting reactionary. I felt like I was just relying on my emotions way too much to dictate what I do or what I not do. And um, everything just became a crutch for me, man. Uh, you know, if something wasn't going right in life, okay, just dump it into the video games, dump it into prawn. You know, it just, just was not good. It left me with uh, <laughs> more anxiety than I had before. I became asexual in high school where I knew that I was straight, I knew that I liked girls, but I could not feel like attracted to them in real life. Maybe if they were on a screen, but in real life, I just felt like, ugh, and I'd feel anxiety and feel like really weird and I didn't want to be around them. It was horrible. It just made, made my mental health way worse. And that really came out in uni. My first year in uni, 
I had opportunities come to me on a silver platter and I literally took a dump on all of them. I, I just did nothing, a complete puss wuss, and it ate me up inside to the point where I, it, I had to do something about it. I'm like, what's going on? Like, why, why am I like this? Why, why don't I have that confidence? I'm seeing these other dudes crush it. What is going on? And, and then that's where the goodness began. You know what I'm saying? That's when I really started using the internet to favor me. I started researching you know, self-development. I found NoFap. I found all kinds of different disciplinary, disciplinary stuff. And it's like I was starting to fill those holes. You know what I mean? Fill the gaps with like healthy things. You know, if there are holes in the wall, you can spray paint them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's great now. It's spray painted. I don't see the holes. That's what I was doing with these other things on the internet. All the video games I was playing, the prawn and whatnot. And I'm not saying that like, don't play games. Don't do this. Don't do that. No, it's okay. like, it's totally cool. You know, even if you watch kind of like D-Gen stuff, like, oh, I like to watch Kardashian sometimes, or I like to watch YouTube drama sometimes. Dude, I like to sniff my own fart sometimes. It's okay. As long as it's not becoming like this like obsessive routine, ritualistic type of like protocol, that's where it starts etching itself into your personality and it becomes dangerous because you might start craving that in real life. You might start craving drama in real life. You might start really only noticing shallow things and valuing shallow things when you should be, you could have been, you know, valuing other things and finding happiness in, in different ways and like your moods start to change, you know what I'm saying? And we really see that with TikTok. People's attention span getting dwarfed more so than it already has been. Uh, people not really reading books no more. Stuff like that, you know? So, yeah, when I was 19, I really started, uh, like, waking up and, like, man, there's so much good stuff out there on the internet. I can, I can really use this stuff. And it was so motivating, man. And I started losing weight, yada, yada, yada. Fast forward five, six years. Here we are, you know? Still to this day, my uh, social feeds are great, man. Sometimes I just block them. But it's just, like, all self-development stuff or some entertainment and in it as well a little spice of entertainment and uh it's good man like i'm at a point now where i'm really happy with the way that i'm using it and also one thing that you do realize about the internet is you can also create i feel like a lot of people aren't really making good use of that and i don't mean create in the way of like oh i'm gonna go take butt selfies i think that's like i think that's stupid to be honest but it People get too much in their head. Oh, I'm, I want to be like this influencer. Well, what's the point if I don't have a million subs? Think of it like this. When you're creating, it's kind of like a puddle out in the meadows. Okay. And sure, you may not be the Atlantic Ocean that like houses all the marine life and it's a whole ecosystem. But nonetheless, that small little splash, that tiny little puddle in the middle of the street that is your content or your mark out there in the digital world birds will still come by and drink from it. You just fed two birds. A week goes by, those two birds had a kid. You sustained them. You played a part in the reproduction of that bird community. You had an impact trying to put, make that mark out there because one, it's so much fun. It's really good, you know? Creating activates different parts of your psyche. It, it really, it's challenging and um, it hel helps you in many different ways. That's probably something I'll have to talk about in a different video. But um, the point I'm trying to make is there's a lot of junk out there on the internet. At the same time, there is so much good and it just comes down to you. You are the deciding factor of whether you're gonna use the internet to raise you for the good. It's a tool. You can leverage it. You can make tons of money using it. You can find amazing people using it. You can change your entire life for the better and help other people, or you can binge TikTok, you can watch Cornhub, you can watch all the drama that you want, but then don't be surprised if you're 30, 35, with no real skills, feeling horrible about yourself, feeling so much shame, feeling a lot of confidence issues, feeling socially just atrophied, like you're a block, like a tree, you can't even look a person in the eye, can't even talk to nobody, don't be surprised, you know? And I don't want you to get there because often that's where a lot of mid midlife crises happen and, and male self deletion happens, but it's a wake up call. If you've been using the internet, you know, you are your own parent. Now guys, you, we are our own parents. Our fathers are not coming to help us. No one's going to come help you. You're either using your internet dad to serve you or your, you know, to, to help build you up or it's punishing you. It's like a narc narcissist, just 
pooping all over you. The worst part is if you're not aware of that, that's when you're really in hell.